Hello and welcome to Let's Review. Well, there's just a week to go until Christmas and, well, because I'm having to record this in advance, the decorations are not up yet. This is a little depressing, but I'm just going to roll with it. So, space games, as I've said recently, have been going through something of a renaissance, but honestly, I don't think they ever went away completely. So this week, I feel like talking about one that I happen to really like. As it is time to once again go back to our old friend and go digging in the crate. I love science fiction. This should not be brand new news to you unless you're the f unless I love science fiction. This should not be surprising to you, at least not if you've seen any episodes of this show before. And quite frankly, I really want more games set in space, because space is really awesome, and games set in space can also be awesome, and that's in the correct dictionary definition of the word awesome. This game is pretty good. I'm certainly not going to say it's the greatest game ever made or anything like that, but it's one that I really like, and frankly I just want to waffle about for a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Star 1. Isn't that the one you can't get running for love nor money? Yes, yes it is, and I will be honest, there may well be a bit of nostalgia goggles going on here since I haven't been able to play this for about four or five years. But then again, that's kind of the point of digging in the crate, so who cares? The game follows Karen Jarvis, a young pilot who has left a highly advanced ship by his father following his death. Why is it always fathers? I have no idea. I think it's just one of those things that gets used. Regardless, the ship in question is the Dark Star 1. And in all honesty, at the beginning of the game, it's a little bit weedy. It can certainly take out a few basic pirates, but not much more than that. However, whereas in other space games you're encouraged to go out and either find or buy bigger and better ships, in Dark Star 1, the ship itself grows. Grows as in you add additional components, or grows as in, well, grows? No, it actually grows. It's implied to be at least partially based on some sort of organic technology, and you can find special artifacts scattered throughout the game that enable you to upgrade your ship in various ways. There's three main upgrade paths. The engines, which increase your acceleration and your power abilities. Your hull, which will increase your health and shields, as well as giving you automated turret mounts. And your wings, which increases your maneuverability, and it also grants you additional forward weapon slots. And depending on which of these upgrades you choose to take, will affect your playstyle. In what regard? Well, because there are... 10 upgrade slots for each segment, but only 20 upgrades available throughout the entire game, you're best suited by choosing two and maxing them out. Personally, for example, I choose to upgrade engines and wings, which gives you up to six forward weapon mounts, which turns you into an absolutely devastating dogfighter, just blasting enemies apart. But if you want, you can quite happily tank up never upgrade the wings at all, be limited to a single forward weapon mount, but have a hull that's coated in turrets that will absolutely swap down enemies as soon as they get into range. That seems like the game doing all of the work for you. A little, but you've still got a manoeuvre to keep the enemy within the arc of your weapons. It's also worth noting that the weapons favoured by each of the different species throughout the galaxy operate on slightly different principles. So you've got some weapons that will fire a lot faster than others, you've got others that will fire very slowly, and projectiles that do massive amounts of damage, but move slowly, so you have to get in a lot closer for them to be as effective, otherwise the enemy will just dodge them. It's also worth noting that some weapons are very effective at stripping away shields, while others will do additional damage to hulls. Overall, there's quite a lot of variety there, and there are a lot of interesting ways to play the combat. I note that you have yet to talk very much about the story. True, but that's mostly because the gameplay is the best part of this game. 
Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the story is bad in any way, it's just a little stock. As I said, it follows the pilot Kaeron Jarvis as he goes to uncover the mystery surrounding his father's death. This takes him through various sectors of the galaxy, and he ends up encountering various different alien races, all of whom are currently being manipulated into going to war against another race known as the Thule. Needless to say, not everything is as it seems, and ultimately Kaeron gets deeply involved in this. Ultimately, the plot isn't half bad, and it does have some really nice character moments and some cute moments of interaction, but it is a bit of a stock plot. The one thing I've always wondered... Why exactly does Kaeron hold a massive gun on the front cover? Because he never uses that anywhere in the game. Because people who commission art for game boxes have no imagination. That actually makes a lot of sense. The second figure on the front cover is Iona, a smuggler that Kaeron picks up along the way who ends up becoming his co-pilot. And honestly, I think they have a really good thing going. They have a lot of good byplay and uh, back and forth chit chat between the two, and honestly it's quite enjoyable to listen to. There's also no shoehorned in romance plot between them, which honestly I like. It's different. Because too often writers feel the need to shoehorn one in even where it isn't necessary. You also come across friends from a variety of the other races, including the warlike Martok, and then the bird-like raptor, and the cephalopod, Octo. Bit on the nose with the species names, aren't they? Yes, but let's be charitable and assume that their names don't have easy translations and humans being humans just kind of named them after stuff we already know, because let's face it, we have a habit of doing that when we name things. Overall, I really like Dark Star 1. A lot of people were disappointed when it came out. They'd been expecting something more in the vein of the X series, for example, where you can really focus on trading and change your ship whenever you like. That is not what this game is. It is a combat game first and foremost. But it's one that has a, a very enjoyable combat system, and honestly, I do think it's a game that's well worth playing. The only trouble is that, as I mentioned before, getting it running on a modern machine can be a little bit of a pain in the neck. Unless, of course, I'm willing to fork out extra money for the GOG version. Still, if you're interested in checking it out, I can recommend you do. And since Steam and GOG both have refund policies now, if you run into technical problems that make it unplayable, then all you've lost is a little time. Now, if you'll excuse me, Christmas is rapidly approaching and there's still much to be done. I will see you later.